Fireball Steve back here in our series on your crash course in how to find meteorites today. You saw a fireball or a lot of your friends and neighbors did. You've learned from our previous videos where they landed and now you want to go find a piece. But what do you look for? Hello Earthlings, in this episode we're going to discuss what you're going to be looking for. The fireball will melt away the meteoroid and often larger pieces will break up into many smaller pieces. Occasionally meteorites over a ton in weight will land intact, but far more often small pieces, softball size and smaller, are what survive. Like a cookie crumbling, there are almost always more small crumbs than there are large chunks. Sometimes more small pieces will afford a better spotting opportunity in an area than fewer larger pieces. If word is out that meteorites have already been found, knowing what size and where they were found will help clue you in on the size to have your eyes focused in on that, in that same immediate area. Larger meteorites have more inertia and will travel further in the air. Smaller rocks slow down more quickly and start to fall earlier. We refer to these as the large end and the small end of the strewn field. When you know the direction of flight and you know the size and location of a meteorite find, you can guess what size of pieces probably will be found in either direction. Most meteorites will have a black or dark gray fusion crust. A small percentage of meteorites will have very little or even no fusion crust on them. This will be due to the crust just not being able to adhere to the rock underneath it, and it breaks off during dark flight. A tiny percentage of rocks will produce a more clear or tan crust. It's best to expect the crust will be black unless strong proof that other abnormal looking pieces have been found from the fall. There is no air in the vacuum of space, so there are no air bubbles in the resulting meteorites. So don't be looking for lava-like air bubbles in rocks. Fireballs will melt and round off sharp edges and corners of meteorites. Shallow impressions, nicknamed thumbprints, will often form on meteorites. Sometimes softer inclusions in the mass will melt out more quickly, causing deeper cavities to form in bigger rocks. Sometimes flow lines will appear on the surface, and in the case of oriented meteorites, there will often be one side that will have a rollover lip on its trailing edge. The interior of the rocks can often be partially exposed, but the rock breaking during dark flight or even after hitting the ground can produce a sharp and distinct break. Usually the interior will range from light gray to dark gray to even black. Sometimes metal iron nickel flakes can be seen in both surfaces and even showing through the fusion crust. Chondrules are little round spheres, often BB-sized, packed together, and sometimes you can see chondrules in broken surfaces and at times even in the melted crust. Some meteorites have shock veins in them, usually appearing as black lines in a lighter gray matrix of the rocks. These were formed by violent collisions in space where the rocks cracked and liquid rock squirted into the voids and cemented back together. Some of these meteorites will have specimens that are composed of completely dark zones and others completely light gray zones, while still others will have a bit of a mix. A few meteorites have a splotchy mix of lighter and darker zones. Within hours of falling, some meteorites will get rust forming on them if they are subjected to water. At first, rust will often be brown, orange, in small specks, but over time then can become almost completely covered in rust. Stone meteorites will often have contraction cracks where after the heat of the fireball is replaced by the near absolute zero temperature inside the rock, which causes the crust to contract and form small hairline cracks. While rare, a small number of falls 
are all iron and they will usually be a gunmetal blue to black in color. They will have very smooth textures to them. Stony irons will be about half metal and half stone, which usually are olivine crystals. And while exceptionally rare, in these cases, you would look for a combination of the gunmetal blue and black stony fusion crust. More times than not, the flat black color of an old rubber tire will be almost an exact match for fusion crust. A few meteorites have little to no metal in them, and these meteorites will tend to often have shiny black fusion crust. But 95% of the time, what you really want to look for is the appearance of a blackish rock jumping to a magnet. While most things that will jump to a rare earth magnet are not meteorites, but the magnet nonetheless will make looking for them easier as you don't have to bend over to get a good look at them. If you want to test your eyesight, spray paint some round earth rocks with black paint, toss them in various places, and see if you can find them. And nothing beats seeing what a previously found meteorite from this fall looks like. Now you know where to hunt and what to look for, so get out there and good luck. As I've said before, anyone can find a meteorite and now I expect you to do so. And when you do, what then? Well, check out our next episode to learn all about that.